Hey, just to let you know, I do not own The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Cartoon Network owns The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Cartoon Network, please, don't take this video down. It's cruel and unusual. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, you know, today, I don't think I want to talk about video games. Today, I want to talk about something different, like a cartoon. <laughs> Oh yes, Cartoon Network's The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Who didn't love this wonderful, silly, stupid show? Well, anyone who didn't grow up with Cartoon Network, I guess. But still, I grew up with Cartoon Network, and personally, I loved Billy and Mandy. This show was great. It had everything a kid like me could ever want. Dark, dry humor, funny jokes, crazy monsters, cruel, unusual plot lines, demented characters, vague pop culture references that only nerds like me would understand, zombies, ghosts, demons, werewolves, tons of other weird supernatural creatures that don't even make any fucking sense half the time. And of course, Billy and Mandy themselves. So, recently, I've been thinking a lot. I've been thinking about what I want to do on YouTube. You know, apart from sitting in this basement and being incredibly handsome. I have so many friends. And well, one thing I've been wanting to do for a really long time now is review cartoons. And yeah, I know there are other YouTubers who do reviews of cartoons, like Rebel Taxi, for instance, who's totally awesome, please do go check him out. But the thing is, me, I only want to review one type of cartoon. One very particular, very specific type. Horror. Look, aren't you too scared? Uh, boo, blah. I want to review the horror cartoons. You know, stuff like Billy and Mandy, Beetlejuice, All Real Monsters, Gargoyles, Salad Fingers. Oh, and of course my personal favorite, Courage the Cowardly Dog. You're not perfect. And, you know, I hate to admit it, but honestly, out of all these shows, Billy and Mandy was probably my least favorite. Don't get me wrong, I love Billy and Mandy, and I'm really excited to talk about it, but compared to a lot of the shows I watched as a kid, something about it certainly feels a lot... less impressive? Graham, wanna help me pick my nose? But to be fair, that's probably because it didn't ever really try to be impressive. Billy and Mandy, for the most part, was a self-aware comedy show. It never seemed to take itself seriously. It was just random and ridiculous. It was kind of like Invader Zim, but somehow it was even more disjointed and goofy. And even though I don't like Billy and Mandy quite as much as half the other shows I grew up with, I do like the concept and premise. Like, a lot. Like seriously, Billy and Mandy probably has my favorite concept of any kid's show I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Santa! Santa Claus! That's not Santa, you stooge. That's the Grim Reaper. So Billy and Mandy follows the story of two little kids, named Billy and Mandy, who somehow, basically, trick the Grim Reaper into being their best friend. Cheer up, Grim. It's good to be alive. That's easy for you to say, Billy. It's killing me. In the very first episode, Billy and Mandy are just hanging out one day, when suddenly, out of nowhere, a supernatural vortex appears in the middle of Billy's bedroom. What's that? It seems to be a swirling vortex of pure evil coming out of your floor. Out of the vortex comes Grimm, who tells them he's come to reap the immortal soul of... Billy's pet hamster, named Mr. Snuggles. You brought presents for Mr. Snuggles! No. I'm taking him away. To the North Pole? No. It turns out Mandy doesn't want Grimm to take Mr. Snuggles, so she challenges him to a game. If Grimm wins the game, he can have Mr. Snuggles. But if Billy and Mandy win, Grimm has to be their best friend for all eternity. So of course, Grimm loses. This is impossible! I am the Grimm Reaper! Master of the forces of life and death! 
Not anymore. And yeah, that's pretty much the premise. I freaking love it. From here, the show goes pretty much all over the place. Billy and Mandy go on all kinds of crazy adventures with Grimm, visiting the underworld, meeting famous monsters, helping Grimm reap the souls of innocent dying people, and pretty much just getting into whatever ridiculous crazy shenanigans the show has in mind. It's a pretty funny cartoon. And honestly, most of the humor just comes from how great the main characters are. Billy is a gross, annoying little boy who picks his nose and shouts stupid things on the top of his lungs. Aww, flowers. <laughs> Grimm is an immortal walking skeleton who obviously has a really hard time fitting in with society. I long for my former grimness. That's so sad. <laughs> and Mandy. Oh god. Mandy, without a doubt, is the best part of the entire show. Hello, Mr. Billy's dad. Can Billy play? Mandy is an intelligent, hateful, cunning little girl with a cynical mind and a deep hunger for absolute power. Everything that comes out of Mandy's mouth is pessimistic. All her humor is dark, ill-tempered, and sarcastic. And she literally has all the best lines in the show. Hey Mandy! What are you supposed to be? I am a ruthless, high-priced, prosecuting attorney. Then what's with the claws? They're for rending human flesh. The funny thing about Mandy is, half the time, she's actually the main antagonist of the show. Mandy herself is a bigger and more sinister threat than most of the other main characters around her. And more often than not, everyone seems to fear her. I just love how in this kid's show full of monsters, ghouls, and supernatural forces of infinite terror and evil, the most threatening thing around is a little girl in a pink flower dress. It's freaking brilliant. A lot of the episodes in the show actually end with Mandy taking over the world. Like there's this one episode where everyone looks into a crystal ball and sees the future. And in the future, Mandy's, well. This is the future, Billy. I now rule the entire earth. In my research, I discovered this worm form would give me immortality. No, worms are not immortal. I've tried this before. <laughs> Believe it or not, that episode is actually a parody of the fourth Dune book. Yeah, who would have known? Making parodies and references is something Billy and Mandy came to be known for. There were Evil Dead parodies, Harry Potter parodies, Resident Evil parodies, references to old obscure 80s horror flicks. Don't look at me! Don't you look at me! The call is coming from inside the house. The whole idea of the cartoon was basically to just make fun of horror. From horror media, to horror culture, to goth people. Excuse me, are you deceased? You suck the life right out of me. But I guess the main point of the cartoon was also just to show terrible things happening to Billy and Mandy. And to Grimm. Oh, 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 no, no, bad dog. Come to think of it, a lot of terrible things seem to happen in this show. I mean like a lot of terrible things. Billy and Mandy was one of the first cartoons I ever remember watching where pretty much every episode ended with something bad happening. Like seriously, these were not happy endings. Most episodes weren't even interconnected, and they would usually almost always resolve with either one or all of the main characters meeting some horrific unchangeable fate. Out of all the endings I remember, there's one where Billy gets trapped in a small box, locked away forever where no one will find him. Oh no! There's one where Mandy accidentally makes everyone in the world spontaneously disappear from existence, leaving her completely alone for all eternity. Hello? 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 There's an episode where everyone's trying to get Mandy to smile, because she never smiles. Somewhere over the rainbow, bluebirds fly. And at the end, when she does smile, the natural order of the universe completely falls apart. You ever get the feeling something really bad is about to happen? It was kind of a dark show. 
A lot of this had to do with the fact that the main characters were all just fucking assholes though. The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy was never a show with any virtues or good morals to teach. Instead, it was usually just cruel and heartless. Hmm. Billy must have fallen in. Oh, he must be writhing in all sorts of agony and evil torment. Yep. And honestly, for a kid's show, that was really refreshing. That's one of the things I used to love so much about Cartoon Network. I mean, it was so carefree. Unlike the inoffensive cartoons of Disney Channel that almost always tried to keep things safe and send a mostly positive message, Cartoon Network just didn't care. They were laid back. They were like early Nickelodeon. They'd try anything. I mean, God, just look at the kind of stuff they got away with on the Powerpuff Girls. Right you are, girls. <laughs> Oh. Hi everybody, it's me, Blossom of the Powder Puff Girls. Can we have all the money, please? Oh. I'm the professor. Yeah, he made us in his laboratory by accident. Don't worry, professor, I was an accident too. I was an accident too. Now be a good audience and stay tuned for part two. I, I can only show a certain amount of clips in a video. Cartoon Network, everybody. So cool.